Hello everyone, Aaron here from Mad7 Computing. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial using PHP scripting. Now I use Dreamweaver CS5 to actually uh, make my scripts, but you can use other text editors such as Notepad. Um, there is other ones out there, but I prefer Dreamweaver. So use whatever text editor you want to use. And basically what I'm going to be making, or showing you how to make, sorry, is I've got a forum and in that forum obviously people can make posts and the people that make a reply to that post have the option to edit the reply they've made in case they make a spelling mistake or in case they want to add a bit more to what they've wrote and I want to give them a maximum time limit of 10 minutes so after that 10 minutes they won't never be able to edit that post so I made this only last night so do bear with me if the code does look a bit long for the part that I'll be showing you there is probably easier ways to make it but as I said this is something I've made personally I only done it last night so I'm a bit chuffed with myself for it working and I hope you can use it on your sites too so what I'll do, I'll just go into my forum and show you it working. Just a note, if you do use this, you can use it for the posts from the original posters, or sorry, the original user that made that post, but it's best just to keep that original post non-editable. Non -editable. So let's just click on that and as you can see there's no buttons or nothing to edit this this is the original post so I'll just click on post reply I'm just going to enter some text in there this is a test submit reply and now you can see we have a new post of this is a test and 10 minutes to edit this post now take the notice of the design of the uh, forums here. I'm just concentrating on getting the scripting sorted out before I even think about changing any of the design about. And obviously the button, I've not changed anything. I just want to show you it, how I've made it. Just so then when you do try and use it, you won't see any difference from what I'm using. And I've not made a sample page. I will be showing you the code from my site that I'm using right now. Just so then if anyone does use it, they can't come back with questions in how do you do this, how do you do that. You just literally copy the code from what I'm using if you want to use this obviously. And that way if it doesn't work, then it's something you're doing wrong. If, you, if you've entered the code as I've got it, it should work for you. So I'm just going to refresh the page just to see if it has passed any minutes, just to see if it's gone down. As you can see, it's gone down to nine minutes to edit this post. Now, obviously, for it to show how many minutes are left, we are going to be using the time function, and we're going to be using the time that is from the database. Because as I say, I'm using it in a forum, so you can use it wherever you like, but you just need to change it however you need to change it, or just use it in the same fashion that I'm using it in a forum, a blog, or in a chat room, anything like that basically. So what I'm going to do first is just show you in my table, this is my post reply, and in there is just the date time of type date time. And when that gets inserted, it just inserts a year, a month, a day, an hour, a minute and seconds. So there's no timestamp involved being put into the database. So let's go back here. Now I'll show you the script that I'm using. So what I've done first of all is made a variable of SQL2 and that equals MySQL query to select all from post reply star meaning all from post reply which is my table name where and obviously I'm just using these here to pick out what I want to pick out 
from within that query. And then I've got or dying MySQL error. And a MySQL error means if there is an error trying to get anything from that query, it will print a sorry, it will print a message out on your screen telling you what the error is so you can go in and fix it. Then I've done another variable of res1 equals mysql num rows sql tw sorry sql2 obviously sql2 being the variable name for the query again then i've done if res1 is greater than 0 so if it has found more than what we're actually showing here so if there is one row or more in that database, in that table, then we can actually bring out whatever we want in the while loop. So while row one equals MySQL fetch array SQL 12. So you just bring out everything you need in your table. Well, from your table, sorry. And all I'm gonna show you is this one here. This is the only one we need to look at. Date time one equals row one date time. Now you can pause this if it will be obviously it's on YouTube you can pause it to copy the code change it where you need to change it the only reason I'm trying to rush through is we only have a 15 minute time on YouTube and I want to make sure we get down to the last minute so I can show you show you what happens to the button after that 10 minutes is gone so this is the part I said you could probably change and neaten up shrink down make it another way but as I said, this is what I've made from the top of my head just by researching the date and time function. So basically I've done if time, meaning the time now, minus strto time, row one date time, which was the one here that I took from my database, from that table name of post reply. And I've put is less than or equal to one times 60. Now the reason we put 1 times 60 is in maths, if you was to do 1 times 60, you would end up with 60. 60 seconds is 1 minute. And then I've made a variable name of time left, and that equals 10 minutes. Else if we do exactly the same, except we do less than or equal to 2 times 60. 2 times 60 is 120, 120 seconds is 2 minutes. And you just basically finish that all the way down till you get to the last one. And just a note, on the one minute that you have left, obviously you don't want to write one minute because you don't have one minute. So you can take the S off of that. Now you're probably wondering why I've done it backwards. Obviously I want to make a count down from the time that the user has left to edit that post as it's more efficient rather than a count up. So at the bottom, I have this part here, my if and else statement for this. Now this is just if you have members in your uh, in your website, if you had say a forum, which is what I've got here, or a blog, anything like that. So I've just took the variable name here, which I've used in my while loop, which was to get out my row UID, which is for the user ID and I'm making sure that is equal to the session ID. So making sure that it's set the same as the session ID from within that page. So just basically we're making sure that that member is actually that member editing that post. So we just do if exactly the same thing as above with time STRO to ST sorry, S-T-R-T-O time, I keep getting that word wrong, row one date time, and then we put is greater than 10 times 60. 10 times 60 in maths, again, 600, 600 seconds. So work that out in minutes, that would equal 10 minutes. So if that's the case, we say edit button equals nothing. We don't want that button to be shown else. So if it's anything below 10 minutes else edit button we do a link for wherever you want your edit reply 
or for your blog where they can edit that post. Then we do an input type of button, a name of edit and the value of time left. Obviously that's the variable name I'm using in the if and else if statements to get the minutes. That's where it will show to edit this post. Then the last part is this one here where we have else edit button equals blank again. Now the reason for this is the while loop. Again, I had if result one is greater than zero, then we can give out their minutes as there would have been a post made in my database. So if the result is returned as zero, so there's nothing in there, then obviously we don't want to show the edit button. So that's basically the script. So let's quickly go back. Let's make sure we're uh, still okay for the time. Right, we've got two minutes left. So I'll just quickly, uh, I won't worry too much on the SQL query as there's so many places you can go to find that. I just want to show you the part that I've made myself. I've not copied this from no one. And as I say, it is something that I quickly made last night and it does work for me it should work for you and as i said if if you're a better php than i am or if you've been doing it longer than i have then obviously you will know a better way to make this a lot easier and a lot shorter but this was just the way i made it to work so just pause it and just copy the code if need be obviously just change it up where you need to change it so that's the script that I'm using. Obviously you don't need to see above and below that because that's other stuff that I'm using. This is just for that edit button here that I'm using. So let's just uh, refresh this page again. Right, we have one minute left. So once that minute's up, that button will disappear. And just to let you know, although we have said if it's greater than 10 minutes, we don't want the button to show it will go just past 10 minutes until it reaches 11. As soon as it reaches 11 minutes, then that button will disappear. So let's just refresh the page. And now you see the button's gone. So we've reached our max time limit. Now that user can, can't edit that post no more. So I hope this helps you guys. And uh, please leave uh, any links in the comments if you use this on any of your websites, just so I can go and have a look. It'd be nice to see something I've made personally myself being used by others. So I'll have some more tutorials up soon and I hope this helps you. Cheers guys.